come out to give God the glory? Man, I, I, I'm telling you, I am enthused. I am excited. I am, I am happy to be in the land of the living. I'm happy to be in, in standing in front of you, being able to worship freely. I don't have no chains on me. I have no shackles on me. I'm here. I'm a, I am able to get out and stand on my own and preach the gospel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Look here, I know we don't have a lot of time. It's getting dark. It's getting darker uh, more and more as we go on. And so I want to I want to be timely. Um, but I, I want to say something. And, and this tonight, this this thought and this word that God has given me is truly something that we really need to make sure that we, we really pay attention to and really look into. And it's and it's a warning to the church. Somebody say amen. 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 Look, tonight, this warning is. Uh, well, first of all, let me ask, let me, let me do something real quick. How many folks here, and I ain't talking about the street, yeah. this, this straight street saying, yeah. but how many of y'all are thirsty yes. tonight? Yeah. Come on, y'all. How many of y'all are thirsty? How many of y'all are hungry for the word? Okay. All right. I just wanted to, I wanted to make sure that we got some, hey, hey, we got some amenners in here. <laughs> <laughs> we got us some hunkers up in here, amen? All right, so the reason why I'm saying this is because we are looking at a place and we are in a place in our life right now where people are no longer thirsty. What I'm saying is people are no longer thirsty or hungry for the word. Oh, we got quiet real quick. What happened to my hunkers? You know, because I know, I ain't saying it's you. I didn't say it was you, but unfortunate, we are in a place where we are no longer thirsty and hungry. In other words, we are no longer reading or hearing or doing the word. Okay, I'm, I'll just talk to myself. All right, and, and the reason why I know it is because I'm, 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 I'm everywhere. I'm all over the place, and I got friends, and I got folks that I'm around, and I can tell. And, it's, and, and at one time, I know a lot of people are going to be innocent. I'm going to do it just like like a pastor would say, look, I'm going to tell on me, and I'm going to tell on the devil. There you go. There is a time where we get in a, to a place where we're running, and we're doing everything in the world but doing what God has called us to do. Here we go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn around and talk to the deacon. I'm going to talk to Deacon Williams because I know Deacon Williams know what I'm talking about. He understands that there are times where we get so busy, we're dealing with family, we're dealing with all these crazy things in this world, and we think it's more important, but we get, it, gets, it becomes more important than reading and doing the Word of God. So tonight, there is a warning given. Amen? And this warning that is given is going to help us to get where we need to get. Come on, now. Come on let's, let, let's do something. Let, let, let's go ahead and pray and we're going to go ahead and get to this word. Amen. Uh, grace is God. First of all, we thank you. Yes, uh, we thank you for the gathering. We thank you for getting another opportunity yes, that we may be able to shine yes, that our, our good works before our men and women, Lord, that yes. you, our Father in heaven, will be glorified. Yes. And we thank you for the word. We thank you for the angels of this house. We thank you for all the leaders. Lord, we thank you for all those who, who went before us, all the forefathers who have went before us and, and the forerunners that have preached the gospel before even us, that we may continue to, to do what you have called us to do. Let us be readers. Let us be hearers. Let us be doers of your word, Lord. Tonight, we are excited, Lord. We are enthused, Lord. We are just wanting to please you tonight, God. And so right now, as you stand before us, Lord, and as we stand before you, Lord, we give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the praise that is due to your name. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, y'all. Can I, can I get the hunkers and the amenners to, to give us an amen for, for, for God? Hallelujah. And pray for me with this big laptop I got here that, the, that somebody would bless me with a smaller laptop. I brought this out here because I know y'all looking at me and saying, man, this old school, what is he doing with this big TV screen out here? Well, listen, listen here. Uh, I can't hardly see. And so that's my excuse. And I need somebody to help me <laughs> to get one. So anyway, here we go. Let's talk about no longer thirsty. Now, there's a saying out here, and it's a street saying that thirsty, and, and, there, and I'm not going to go all into it, but there's a lot of, lot of sayings out here talking about thirsty. 
And again, we're not talking about that type of thirst. What we're talking about not tonight is thirsting for the Word of God. Right. Amen? Amen? Forget about the worldly thing, whatever y'all thought about what it was. We're talking about right now we're at a place where people are no longer thirsty. Amen. And so I had to go back to Amos. I had to go back into the Old Testament so that he can reference the new the New Testament to let us know where we are today. Amen. So as we look at Amos 8, 11 through 13, it says, Behold, the days come, said the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor thirst of water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea and from the north even to the east and shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord and shall not find it. In that day shall the fair virgins and the young men faint for thirst. What am I talking about today? If we look back at Amos and we look at the text of what happened in Amos, there was a time where again, and it's happening right now, where men and women were given the word. And they were given a task to do for the, for the Lord. And unfortunately, they didn't do it. The Israelites continued to do, to continue to follow and then drop off. They will follow and then drop off. And it sounds like that's what we are today. We are followers. We follow to a certain point and then we fall off. We follow and then we fall off. We are hearers, but we won't do. Or we're readers, and we might hear, but we won't do. And so we're at a place now where we need to get back to where God has called us to. And so in Amos, it got to a place where God said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm, I'm, I'm so angry with you, with you Israelites, which now we look at us as Christians. He said, I'm mad at you. So there's going to be a place where I'm no longer sending a prophet. And so there was a time where there was no longer prophet sinned with the word. I know I'm telling the truth because I read it. <laughs> I know what the word says. And the word is, and so God is letting us know that if we're not careful, that time is coming back where you won't have a person before you that's going to bring the word. So you're going to be at a place where if you're not hungry, you're not going to be hungry. If you're not thirsting, you're not going to thirst and you're going to be lost. And so right now, we want to make sure that we stay in the vein of God. Amen. 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 Look, when I seen this, this message, when I, when I seen this and I was like, man, it's going to be a, a it's, there's a famine of the word. And he, it, this is God. This is God sent. This ain't us. This ain't the devil. This is God sent saying, look, you no longer want to hear from me. So I'm not going to be available for you. I don't want to be in a place where I can't pray or reach out to my father. And he's not available. Come on now. Come on now. And so what I want to do is, is the, the danger. These are what we call stop signs or danger signs. They come up that keep us from hearing from God. Amen. One of the things that we need to be careful of is material. Some of these material things that's keeping us from the Lord. Amen. And Deuteronomy 8, 11 and 14 and 17 says, beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God. And not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes, which I commanded thee this day. And then it tells us, it says, lest when thou hast eaten or full, has built godly, I mean, goodly houses and dwelt therein. And when the herds and the flocks multiply and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied and all that has multiplied, then thy heart be lifted up and thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. What this is telling us, even as we look at today is we're working. A lot of us have these great jobs and even the ones that don't feel like we got great jobs. We got jobs. Let's just say that. And we got jobs. And with our jobs, we feel like with these jobs and with this finances, we do what we want to do. And we feel like, look, and since God has blessed us, you know, because we'll use that all the time. Oh, God's blessed me. But the problem is, is, is we get so far away that when we get the goods, we get our money, we forget about the one who gave it to us. A lot of us, and I'm going to say it in the church, if we look at it, and pastor has never said this, so I'm going to have to go on record and have to do a disclaimer because we don't talk about the finances. But because I've been around long enough, I know that there's probably about a 30% of the church that tithes. 
Okay. I don't even know if it's that, but I'm just I'm giving us 30%. I know it's gonna get quiet on that one. And again, and even planting, when I say, uh, and, and I'm saying giving you a seed. Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm just gonna sit that, I'm gonna sit on that one right there. But we allow our materials, but we look good. Oh yeah. Oh, we look good. Cars look good. House looks good. Kids look good. Everything else looks good but God. And so we are busy. And so we, we have gotten so far away. I'm telling you, look, this, it ain't going to be this all night, y'all. This is just, I have to give this because this is the warning given that we must not continue to go and get all this. This And here is talking about the golds and all the thing. And that's what we're doing now. All the money and the material and all the things that lavish and looks good and all that means nothing. Look, I'm one and I throw my hand up. I'm one. I love having things. I enjoy going and doing being, but I'm not putting it before God. I'm going to tell you that off top. And anybody that knows me knows I'm not putting that before God. Because it's all going to burn, y'all. It's all going to go. And so let's remember that these material things will take us away from our God. Come on. And if I can, uh, see, that's why I said y'all going to have to help me with a bigger, with a better uh, laptop. All right, here we go. And then in Luke 8 and 12, again, dealing with riches, it says, And that which fell among thorns, or they, we know the scripture, which when they have heard, go forth, and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life, and brings no fruit to perfection. And so what happens is, again, we, we get choked out. We, get, we take all of these things. And I see it so much even more now. I see even our children have mimicked us. Oh, it's sad. They have mimicked us. They will go and they and, and selfish. We got some of this. I'm sorry, and I'm gonna say it, and I hope everybody in my family see this. We got some selfish folks around here. Ain't thinking about nobody but themselves. And God is the last thing on their mind. And so that's why. There is a famine. That's why there is no thirst. Because everything else looks good. I ran into a restaurant. I was running today and uh, after church and I'm trying, I mean, after, after work and I'm running because I'm trying to get here. And I stopped in a place and I can tell that everybody's running in and they, they, their mind is on everything. And then the music in this place was horrible. And the language in here in this place was horrible. And it just let me know again that everybody has everything else. And they think about everything else. And they talk crazy and all that. And you can tell that God is the last thing. They're not even thinking about that this could be the last day. That's right. They just believe, look, I got what I got. I worked hard. And, and I get to do whatever I want to do with my finances. Yeah. Amen. And so we have to get away from this thing. One last thing. And before I, I turn this thing around, because I don't want to just, this is not a beat down thing. This is just something that we have to look at and evaluate what we're doing as believers. Amen. Amen. One of the other things that we have to be careful is our fleshly, it's a fleshly corruption. This thing right here is what also divides us and keeps us from really reading or hearing the word. And Galatians 6 and 8 says, because the person who sows in his own flesh will reap corruption just real quick because a person who sows his own flesh in other words the things that you sow in yourself if it's fleshly don't think that it's going to be a spiritual thing that's going to come out again i'll say it again look we we're at a place where we're thinking that hey if we we, we think that we can do whatever we want to do and anytime we want to we can just jump out and, and we back into the holy spirit well if you continue to feed yourself and feed your flesh Guess what? The flesh is going to take over. I know, I'm, I know I'm saying something. The flesh is going to take over. Look at what Romans 8 and 5 and 9 says. For those who are according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who are according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. For the mindset on the flesh is death. Sit on that. Flesh is death. But the mindset on the spirit is life and peace. Because the mind set on the flesh is hostile towards God. For it does not subject itself to the law of God. 
for it is not even able to do so. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. However, you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. But if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong. It does not belong in him. Oh, I know I said a lot right there. I know I said a lot right there. Think about this. Look, if we're dwelling in the flesh, if we stay in the flesh, God can't, come on, God can't do nothing with us. He's disconnected from us because we are not righteous. We're not in the spirit. But when we're in the spirit, we dwell in God. All of these things come from reading. All of these things come from praying. All of these things come from meditating. All these things come from spending time with, with God. All these things come from being around believers. Because these things help us to grow. And if we continue to stay out, guess what? We're not going to be readers or hearers or doers of the word. Come on. So this is where I want to go. So those that don't want to be, they don't want to be, y'all don't want to have a famine of the word. Guess what? In 1 Peter, it tells us that we, we need to be like newborns. This is how we do the turnaround, y'all. If I give y'all the, the ugly, then I got to give you the good. So we have to be like in 1 Peter 2 and 2, it says, like newborn infants, long for pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up into salvation. Let's begin by having a habit of our daily Bible reading, y'all. This is how we can do it. This is how we can stay successful, man. Look, this is what will help us. The newborn infants long for pure. Think about this. Just like a baby. We got our little grandson over to the house. In the same way that he thirst and hunger, y'all know them little babies be hungry. Y'all see them and their lips is puckered up and, they, and, it's, and it's a pure thing. When they hungry, they hungry. And they cry out. And this is the thing. When, you, when a baby is really crying, you used to see my little, the, the youngest grand, grandson. This dude loses his mind when he's hungry and he's thirsty. What I'm saying is he gets to shaking when he see that bottle coming. And he's just shaking, you know, his hands are moving because you can't get it to him quick enough. And that's how we should be as Christians. We should be hungry. We should be shaking and, and, and we should be at a place like the, like the baby. You know, like, oh, man, I cannot wait. I, I can't wait to get that word. I can't wait to get what God has for me. When I get a new word or when I, I call it a new word, but it's not a new word. But when God reveals something again to me, I'm so elated. I want to tell somebody about it. And this is how babies are. And it's pure. It's not braggadocious. I'm not, I don't want something so I can go and brag about it. I, I'm getting this because I am so excited that God is still speaking to me. I just told you that there's a fa he, We might get a famine of the word, y'all. We might get to a place where we, the, the, he might just shut it down and say, you know what? I'm done. Now I'm coming back. And we need to be ready. Come on, y'all. I'm almost finished. Almost finished. Come on. So here we go. One of the other things we must do. This is in Psalms 1, 3, 1 through 3. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the way of the sinners, nor sit in the seat of scorers. Y'all know this, this scripture. But his delight in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by the streams of water, and yields in the fruits in its season. And his leaf does not wither. In all he does, he prospers. Amen. This is where we ought to be. This is where we all should want to be. Yes, we should be want to be in a place where, where God is just flowing through us and we're prospering. And not just prospering financially. But I'm talking about prospering in health. Prospering in the word. Prospering in our thoughts. Prospering in friendships. Prospering in all those things that God has in store for us. Amen. This is where we should be prospering. It's, it's, it's our, this is really our season. But if we don't take the season, we're going to be out of season. There is a thing where it's called out of season. When you see a person wearing white in the wintertime, they say you're out of season. That's what they say. I'm not talking about you. I ain't not talking about you, DG. I mean, DC. I'm not talking about you. But I'm saying that sometimes this is what it looks like. This is what they say. You're out of season.
right? There was times when, look, when football is when when football season is over, it's over until the next year. And so we don't want to be in a season where we're supposed to be in it, but we're out of it. Because God will take you out if you're not careful. If we're not careful. Amen? We must pray for enlightenment and ask help for obedience. Psalms 119, 33 and 40. 30, yeah, 33 through 40. Teach me, O oh Lord. This is how we need to pray. Teach me, O oh Lord, the way of your statutes. And I will keep it to the end. Give me understanding that I might keep your law and observe it with my whole heart. Lead me in the path of your commandments, for I delight in it. Decline my heart to your testimonies and not to selfish gain. Turn my eyes from looking at worthless things and give me life in your ways. Confirm to your servant your promise that you may be feared. Turn away and reproach that I dread for your rules are good. Behold, I long for your precepts and your righteousness. Give me life. That should be our prayer. We should be seeking God. We should be at a place where we're so thirsty. I'm talking about like a natural thirst. How many of y'all have ran somewhere or did something and you look up and you just so, I mean, when I say so thirsty, I'm talking about thirsty where you don't even think you're going to make it. I'm the only one. I know I'd have been there. I'd have been where I'm talking about where I'm so thirsty. I'm laying over somewhere. I'm like, whoo, that's how we should be for God. We should be so, I mean, I'm talking about such in a place, thirsting. This is where I'm getting back to. I, I'm, this word is for me. I have been the runner. I said it last week. I've been the runner. I've been the person who is doing so much that I'm, I'm, I, I tell myself that I'm giving God time, but I'm not giving him. When I used to give him 10, I'm giving him two. Where I used to pray for, for just say if I'm praying for 30 minutes, I'm doing it for six. And what I'm saying is, is I'm cutting everything because I'm being selfish. What I'm doing is, is because what I'm doing now is just saying, well, I did at least. I did at least. What if God said, I did at least on you? I'm just saying, what if he did, I at least did this? We'll be in trouble. And so the same way that you want to be treated, treat God the same way. Come on, y'all. Treat the word the same way. Come on, y'all. This is my last. This is this is it, y'all. This is my last scripture. And we're going home. Okay, three more. No, I'm just joking. Just one. Just one. Just one. Give me one more hour. <laughs> Believe me, the sun will be coming back up when we when we done. All right, here we go. Deuteronomy 5 and 33. Walk in obedience to all that. Oh, let me do this again. Walk in obedience to all that the Lord your God has commanded you so that you may live and prosper and prolong your days in the land that you will possess. Can I read that again? Okay, thank you. Thank you, brother. Walk in obedience to all that the Lord your God has commanded you. So that you may live and prosper and prolong your days in the land that you will possess. Look, I talked about no thirst. There is a, uh, remember the commercial, uh, was that the Sprite or 7-Up the Thirst or something? You remember that? You remember that? Yeah. The quench your thirst. This is where we should be because this word, God's love will quench your thirst. We should no longer be thirsty. He said in his word, and I just didn't read the scripture, but he told us that he'll give us the water that we'll never thirst again. That's what the word says. I love, I, that's what I want. I want that word that will never, so I, that means I'll never run dry. That means I will never be a dry Christian. I'm going to say that again, because that was over some of y'all's head. You know, because we got some dry Christians. I'm just going to, I'm just going to say it. And so, again, we don't want to be dry Christians, but we want to thirst for righteousness, thirst for the, for the word. Amen. Thirst for God. We should no longer be thirsty. As I close, I'm a, I'm a, I have to I, I can't leave without saying this. Look, I'm noticing that we have I, I'm, I'm noticing my, my friend Roland and a lot of these 
young men are starting to come back around. Amen. And it's a, it's a